So about two weeks ago, I posted a video of a chain fire that I had in my Colt Walker. And all the safety rangers and FUDs went... <laughs> Man, if there's two things I love, it's shooting and upsetting FUDs and safety rangers. So, what the hell is a chain fire? Well, a chain fire is something that can happen on a cap and ball pistol, and what it is is when you have your cylinders loaded and capped, and you cock the hammer and pull the trigger, and more than one chamber fires at a time. And it uh, it's not very good, and it's embarrassing, to say the least, and it's not really something you want to have happen. Now, what causes a chain fire? Well, basically, one way or another, either from the front, well, the front, or the back, some flame gets into another chamber and sets one of those things off. So, how do you prevent that from happening? Well, that depends on who you ask. Now, I wanna warn you, in this lecture I'm about to give you, I'm gonna be saying things like, in my opinion and in my experience, more than a few times, so consider yourself warned. But there is a particular group of people that say things with extreme certainty, like everyone knows chain fires come from the nipple side of the chamber. Oh, well, okay, I suppose that's possible. And then there's another group of people that say things like, wads and grease do absolutely nothing to prevent a chain fire. Okay, well, in my personal opinion, I disagree with both of those statements when they're said with 100% certainty. Now, don't get me wrong, for the people that say, well, I think it's very possible that a chain fire could come from the back. I mean, look, there's a hole there. I agree 100%. But in my experience, I think chain fires come from the front of the cylinder. Now, how do you prevent a chain fire in my opinion? Well, I think the best thing you could do is one, make sure you have caps that aren't going to at least fall off. I've had to several times in years past give them a little bit of a pinch and stick them on. And I'll either use a wood dowel to push them on all the way, or I'll hold it like this and drop the hammer and I will give it a bit of a push with my thumb while I'm pointing my firearm in a safe direction. Also, you could use a wad in between the powder and the ball or grease. Now, in my opinion, I prefer grease uh, I don't really prefer wads uh, for a couple reasons. One, they take up too much room in the chamber uh, that you could be using for a conical or a ball or more powder. Uh, two, they don't give the amount of lubrication that I like on a cap and ball firearm. And three, uh, they seem to affect my accuracy negatively. Now, again, that's my opinion. That's my experience. I prefer grease. Now, another thing too I would like to clarify, when I say grease, what I'm referring to is my homemade black powder lube. I know most people, when I say grease, they probably think Crisco or boar butter, which is a commonly used thing uh, when greasing chambers. I don't like either of those products because in my opinion, they're too runny and it gets hot in my part of the country and on a day when it's 100 degrees plus, that stuff will run right out of the chamber mouths and not do much for you. Now, the part where I disagree about wads or grease helping, well, there's, <laughs> I've heard a lot of things about this. And one of my favorite ones that I've heard is wads and grease being a necessity is a conspiracy that is pushed by the companies that sell wads and grease. So us black powder peasants keep buying their products so we can shoot. Well, that's a pretty cool story. I don't think I believe it, but I prefer grease. I believe it helps based on my experience with this, and I'll tell you about that in a second. But uh, using black powder lube, again, I know I call it grease, but it's black powder lube and it's lamb's tallow and beeswax, uh, performs probably the, the biggest thing th that helps black powder shooting, especially with cap and balls is it keeps the fouling nice and soft and you can smear that stuff in the chambers and shoot and continue to shoot and load another chamber full and shoot. And I could shoot one of my open tops all day pretty much and not have to disassemble it and clean it. Not the case with a Remington style firearm. Anyway, so 
Another thing I want to clarify is in the Walker chain fire video I posted a couple weeks ago, I mentioned that the only two times I've ever had a chain fire, I wasn't using wads or grease. Let me just clarify. I have shot plenty in my cap and ball career without any wads or grease. This pistol here is a Pieta 1860 Army. This was the first cap and ball pistol I ever bought. I bought it when I was 16. I bought it from Dixie Gunworks and I have shot this thing to pieces. I've shot it so many times over the years. I've broke it, I don't know how many times. I broke countless uh, hand springs and bolt springs. I've shot the arbor loose a couple of times and had to have it fixed. I have shot this thing more than most people shoot a cap and ball revolver. The first two years I had it, I think I shot it every day. And I've never had a chain fire. And for the first few years that I was shooting cap and ball pistols, I didn't use any wads or grease or anything. And again, never had a chain fire. Now, I use in my 44 caliber firearms, I use a 454 ball. Now, when you seat a 454 ball or any size ball, rather, when you seat that ball, you should have a nice ring of lead that it leaves right on top of the chamber mouth that you could pick up and look at and inspect. And what that does is ensure that you have a nice pressed fit that's going to stop any hot gas, burning powder or anything from reaching into one of these other chambers and setting it off. That is probably the most important thing. Wads and grease are just added protection in my opinion, which brings me to this firearm right here. Now, this was given to me by a customer and it looked like hell. It's, a, it's made by Army San Marcos and it had tool marks all over the barrel. It really looked like hell. Uh, I made a video on it where I cleaned it up and then we made it function and nobody watched it, but that's okay. And for the first time, you know, I've never shot it before. I grabbed my 454 balls and I loaded it up and I pressed those things in there and it did not shave off any lead. Well, these chambers are a little bit bigger than all of my other ones that are 44 caliber. And I didn't have my black powder lube handy. And I thought, ah, oh, well, you know, I'll just, I'll just give it a try. You know, it'll, it'll probably be fine. And I fired, boom, and all three across the top went off. Boom, all three of them. I thought, wow, okay, that never mind. It, apparently it wasn't fine. I went back inside. I grabbed my grease. I greased the other three chambers and shot it. It was fine. Loaded it again. Shot it. Loaded and sh I, I don't know. But I probably shot four or five cylinders worth out of it. And it hasn't chain fired since. But I make sure with this one to always use my black powder lube on those chambers. Now I can hear them already. Well, obviously you're using the wrong size ball. Yes, I agree. This probably requires a four, five, seven, or maybe even larger diameter ball, but the grease, in my opinion, shows that it does help to prevent a chain fire. Now, the other part, I'm sure somebody's going, well, how do you know it's not coming from back here? Well, you know, to be 100% certain, I guess I can't say that it's not, but I know that if you don't have the, that ring of lead, you don't have a really good press fit, and it's very possible that you can get one in there. And also, being that three of them went off, not just one, all three, both of them, on the adjacent of the barrel went off, that's a pretty good indication that there's something seriously wrong. Now, that brings me to the Walker chain fire. Now, I was trying to get a test with just, you know, max velocity or a max charge velocity with 55 grains on this thing. And so what I did is I loaded it with 55 grains in a round ball. I didn't have my grease. I had left it at home, so I didn't use a wad or grease. And I capped it. I fired one round, boom, it went off fine. And then the next one, boom, and I had this chamber go off. Just like that light just went off there. Anyway, now... I think personally what happened was when I was seating those balls, I don't think I had one of those sprues facing right up. I think it might have been off to the side. And when I pushed that thing down, I think I had a ring that didn't have, that wasn't complete. I think it had a breach. And I think with the excessive powder charge of 55 grains, it managed to weasel its way in there once I got, once it got wheeled around next to the chamber that was going off because when it was one down the first time, it didn't have a problem. Now, again, I suppose you could say, well, still, how do you know it didn't come from here? Well, I came across this test 
Well, I came across this video of this guy doing a test. The name of this channel is Old Ranger. And man, I, it's an awesome video. I'll post a link in the description to it. And what he does is he tests the probability of, of a chain fire coming from the nipple side. And he takes an 1851 Navy and he loads up three chambers with whatever powder charge. And the center one, he uses a round ball. And the two adjacent chambers, he just pushes a wad in and then he greases them. And he leaves the two caps off of the adjacent chambers. And he shoots and loads and fires that, that uh, center chamber over and over again, trying to get it to chain fire from back here. And I thought, man, that's an excellent video. I'm gonna do the exact same thing with my walker here and see if I can't do the same, which I did. I loaded up three of them with 55 grains, the center chamber, I used a 454 round ball, the two adjacents, I used a wad, I greased the chamber mouse, and I left both the caps off on the adjacent side and I loaded and fired that over and over again. And here's what happened. Chain fire test one, no caps. Bring her up. No caps. No chain fire yet. Let's load up that center cylinder again. Okay, so what we've done here is we've loaded up two chambers here and there with 55 grains of 3F, a wad, and then grease the chamber mouths, and then the center chamber we load up with 55 grains and a round ball. I just shot it once and it did not chain fire. And what we're doing is we're leaving the caps off of the two chambers that are not loaded with a ball. So now we'll do this again. Also, when I say grease, this is what I'm referring to as black powder lube. I know a lot of people think of Crisco and boar butter, but this stuff has the consistency of cold butter. It's 90 something degrees out here and this stuff does not melt. Well, not like grease, not like Crisco or boar butter. All right, so now we'll cap up that center. All right, chain fire test number two. No chain fire. Ooh, look at that though. Look at that. There's an example. No, 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 no. Show me the cylinder. There's an example of much how fast the gas is moving. Yeah, These things and it, were filled up to the top. Yeah, and it'll blow that grease out of the way. Let's try it again. All right, chain fire test number three. how it's moving that grease it flattens it off and uh really moves it around yeah it's there's that, a lot of force going on in there that flame's trying to get in there chain fire test number four Chain fire test number six. Still there. Now we're gonna clear those chambers. That's not nearly wow. that loud. Pretty punky with no ball in there. Fork. All right. Chambers are clear. Yeah, even though that cap didn't split off, that's interesting. That is interesting. Usually they almost always split off. Yeah. All right, so now what we've done is we've cleared, the, cleared those chambers. 
I've got them loaded with 55 grains of 3F. I have a wad compressed on top. The center chamber is loaded with 55 grains and a round ball. I'm going to cap all three of them and shoot the center to see if the other two will chain fire. Don't try this at home. Fire test. This is wads, no grease with caps. I'm gonna try and set off the center one. Oh, look at that. And it went. Look, both sides. There we go. Yuck. Yeah. Oh, oh, see if the primers will go. See if the caps will go. Oh, <laughs> and the ah. caps are still live. So is there some kind of definitive conclusion with all of this? Well, I'm afraid not, but I can tell you what it looks like to me. The first being that a chain fire coming from the nipple side of the cylinder might not be nearly as likely as some people say. I still think that the majority of chain fires are probably caused from loose fitting balls, but I suppose someone could say that I only gave it six chances to chain fire and that's simply not enough. Well, I suppose I could load it 40 or 50 more times and it might or might not chain fire. But I think one thing that it does show is using grease on the chamber mouths can help to prevent a chain fire because when I was just using wads, I fired it six times with those mouths greased and it did not chain fire. And the first time I wasn't using grease and I had the nipples capped, it chain fired directly. So I suppose someone could say, well, it was going to do that because you didn't have a ball in there sealing the chamber. Well, yes, but it didn't chain fire before. So I would say that the grease was sealing the chamber. And if you weren't using the right size ball or maybe didn't have a nice ring cut from the sprue not being up, then the grease would be added protection against a chain fire, or at least that's what it looks like to me. So now I would like to address a couple of the salty comments that I got from the FUDs and Safety Rangers on the Walker chain fire video. There was a bunch of people that were quick to point out that I wasn't wearing my safety glasses. Well, sorry. That happens every once in a while. Now, if that's a deal breaker for you, well, then I'm afraid we're going to have to just part ways. But I'm not really sure why there was a handful of people that were so mad about it. I mean, I had one person tell me that me personally is everything wrong in his life and society. So for those of you that were upset about it, there's some good news. Your safety glasses still work even if I'm not wearing mine. Another one I found really entertaining was from a guy who said I was a noob who had only ever read books written by other noobs because I committed the heinous crime against humanity of recommending wads and grease to prevent a chain fire. Well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. Well, look, like I've said, this is what I've found works well for me. Now, if your great granddad or whatever taught you how to do it different and that's the way you like it, that's fine. Keep on doing that. I don't know why you'd be listening to some jerk on the internet anyway. So other than taking some fire from the safety rangers and fuds out there over that video, things around here have been going pretty good. We reached 10,000 subscribers the other day. So to all of you guys out there, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And, like usual folks, if you thought this video didn't suck, do me a favor and hit the like button and consider subscribing. And if you did think it sucked, you know what to do. Go make your own damn video.